Almost everyone has heard of the two Dayton, Ohio brothers, Wilbur and Orville Wright, who made aviation history with the first successful powered airplane flight. However, not everyone knows that their first four flights took place right here on the Outer Banks of North Carolina, in Kitty Hawk and Kill Devil Hills, on December 17, 1903. So this week, we're taking you along with us to this historic site to learn some of the history around that first flight, as well as the Wright Brothers Monument. So get ready to take to the air as the sky's the limit, right here on History and Relics. The Wright brothers, Wilbur Wright, born April 16, 1867 in Millville, Indiana, and Orville Wright, born August 19, 1871 in Dayton, Ohio, were aviation pioneers, recognized for inventing, building, and flying the world's first successful motorized airplane on the cold and windy morning of December 17, 1903. The first of four flights that day lasted only 12 seconds but it was 12 seconds that would change the world forever. Leading up to this historic event was nothing shy of years of study, trial and error, sweat and sacrifice made by these two modest men. In 1900, the brothers consulted the U.S. Weather Bureau and other individuals conducting flight experiments to identify locations that would meet certain criteria of topography, vegetation and wind. They chose North Carolina's Outer Banks around Kitty Hawk because of the landscape and presence of several large sand dunes, known in the area as Kill Devil Hills. The area was characterized by broad, open expanses of shifting sand and steady, northeasterly prevailing winds. The area was void of vegetation because of the high winds, salt spray, and periodic storm overwash. The brothers petitioned mechanic Charlie Taylor, who ran a bike shop for the men in Dayton to build a lightweight engine. Throughout 1903, they built their new and improved flying machine, and by fall, they left for Kitty Hawk to give it a try. When the plane and the conditions were finally set, the brothers took to the dunes with a few nervous onlookers, including John T. Daniels, a member of the U.S. Life Saving Station in Kill Devil Hills. At 10.35 from atop the dunes, Orville held firmly to a rope restraining the flyer against a vicious headwind as it slowly proceeded forward. Wilbur, with one hand on the wing of the aircraft, was able to keep up moving forward as the flyer progressed onward. When the flyer reached the end of the track, it lifted into the air. Daniels, who had never seen a camera before, let alone operate one, is the person who took this photograph of the first powered flight, one of the most historic photographs of the century. The camera that Daniels operated was a Gunlock Corona V-View, which used 5x7-inch glass plate negatives. The camera was owned by the Wright brothers, who wanted to make sure that they caught this historic moment and to preserve a record for any future patent claims. The plate was not developed until the Wright brothers returned to Ohio. Orville later said that the flight was extremely erratic, like a bucking bronco at a rodeo, with the flyer rising dipping down, ascending again, bouncing and plunging again. The flyer traveled a distance of 120 feet and was airborne for a total of approximately 12 seconds. Orville was later asked, were you scared? And with a smile he replied, scared? There wasn't time. Known initially as the Kill Devil Hill Monument, it was authorized by President Calvin Coolidge and the War Department in March 1927. The 60-foot granite monument stands majestically atop the 90-foot Kill Devil Hill and commemorates the Wright brothers' grand achievement. The New York architectural firm Rogers & Poor designed the monument. 
The design was officially selected on February 14, 1930. Prior to construction, Captain William H. Kindevator of the Quartermaster Corps was selected by the War Department to prepare the site for construction and manage the area's landscaping. Kindevator selected Bermuda grass to be planted on Big Kildevil Hill and the surrounding area to secure the sandy foundation. He also arranged for a special fertilizer to be spread throughout the area to promote grass and shrubbery growth. A fence was also built to prevent animal grazing. With a strong foundation in place, Kindevator selected Marine Captain John A. Gilman to preside over the construction project. Construction began in October 1931 and with a budget of $213,000, which is nearly $4 million today, the memorial was completed in November 1932. In the end, 1,200 tons of granite, more than 2,000 tons of gravel, about 800 tons of sand, and almost 400 tons of cement were used to build the structure, along with numerous other materials. It is constructed of granite mined from the North Carolina Granite Corporation Quarry Complex. The memorial was dedicated on November 14, 1932. Over 20,000 people were expected to attend the event, but only around 1,000 showed up on the stormy and windy day. The main guest of honor, of course, was Orville Wright. Aviator Ruth Nichols was given the honor of removing the American flag that covered the word genius and the plaque on the monument. President Herbert Hoover was slated to attend the event, but was unable to do so, but sent an honorable letter that was read prior to the dedication. The ceremony also marked the rare occasion when one of the persons the memorial was dedicated to, Orville Wright, was still living. Unfortunately, Wilbur passed away some 20 years earlier, on May 30, 1912, from typhoid fever. He was 45. Orville Wright passed away on January 30, 1948, at the age of 76, following a second heart attack. Both brothers are buried in a family plot at Woodland Cemetery in Dayton, Ohio. John T. Daniels, the famous photographer, died the day after Orville on January 31, 1948, and is buried at Mantillo Cemetery in North Carolina. On December 17, 2003, the centennial of flight was celebrated at the park. The ceremony was hosted by flight enthusiast John Travolta and included appearances by President George W. Bush, Apollo 11 astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, and test pilot Chuck Yeager. An interactive sculpture was also dedicated during the centennial celebration in 2003 by the state of North Carolina. The life-size bronze and steel sculpture was created by Stephen H. Smith and is a full-size replica of the 1903 Wright Flyer at the very moment the flight began. The Wright brothers are shown here as well as John T. Daniels who took the famous photograph of the first flight, along with other members of the Kill Devil Hills Life Saving Station. And now, let's take a walk around the park and show you all the highlights that we discussed today.
Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed our program. If you like our content, we ask that you give us a thumbs up, a like, share with your friends, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell so you always know when our new content is published. And all of this costs nothing but means a lot to us and keeps us growing. You may also leave us a tip if you choose. The address is provided here on your screen and a link is provided in the description area below. So until next time, everyone, this one is history.